In this video, I'll walk you through Dream AI, which is the image generator within my designs. It's recently gotten some updates, which means that now it can help you generate some amazing looking graphics for products such as t-shirts, stickers, or tumblers. So here we are inside of my designs. I've got the Dream AI tab selected. This is what the image generator looks like. We've got a lot of different fields and sliders right here for the, for the prompting. And then the results will be shown on the right. You've also got some different settings at the top. So first of all, the folder is quite important. Whichever file destination you've got selected right here is where the images will be saved into. And you can change that easily by just clicking on a different folder or adding a new one and then hitting open folder right here. Then then this has got the credits over here, which they're quite high on this demo account. I think the free plans get about 30 credits a month. It refreshes on a monthly basis. Same with the paid plans. Um, so once you've run out, you can either purchase more credits or wait until they've refreshed and you will get some new ones that way. Um, the next button down is for downloading images to your device rather than storing them on my designs. You need to select images first for that to work. Then we've got the upscale function. So if you do want to upscale and increase the quality first, you can select 2x or 4x right here but alternatively you could use the uh, vectorizer which is built into my designs as well that is currently still free so i will show you that at the end of this video as an alternative to the upscaler because yeah the upscaler does use up some credits as well and then you can select the file slot that these designs will be saved into. Usually that would be main file or default. And then you can click store to listings with the blue button over here. You've also got a history button at the very bottom. And this brings up all of your previous prompts and generations. So whatever you open up, you will see exactly which settings were used, the prompt, and obviously you can still access the results. So in order to create your AI images right here, the first thing you can do is change the style. In this case, we see a result with digital art, but you can also select other ones such as neon punk that gets some good results. If you're doing Tumblr wraps, messing around with various different models right here or preset styles could definitely be useful for t-shirt designs and stickers. You want to probably stick to neon punk and digital art because they're going to be most applicable. Then we've got the mode. In most cases, just use text to image. That's normal prompting, but image to image could sometimes be useful if you want to use a reference image. In that case, that the AI uses and sort of copies the same sort of style and layout from. But in this case, we stick to text to image. Then you can select the aspect ratio with this slider. For t-shirts, I would recommend one by one or four by five and the number of images that are being generated. However, watch the credits down here. As we bring this slider up, the credits also increase. So if you don't have a lot of credits, just set this to one and make sure that the results actually look decent before you bring up this slider. Then you can select the model. SDXL 1.0 is the best one and the most recent one at the moment. So I'd recommend choosing that. If you're watching this way in the future, there might be a newer version that gets better results. And then we've got the prompting field, a very simple, straightforward prompts, get amazing results with SDXL 1.0, a bit like mid journey. And we don't really have to put an extensive prompt. That's like half a book to get nice graphics back. We've also got a field for negative prompting. So um, if you want to avoid anything like mock-ups, if you using the, the keyword t-shirt in your prompt, you can put mock-up into here and to avoid them actually generating t-shirts and more sticking to a t-shirt design style. That is essentially the same as the dash dash no function in mid journey that I use quite a lot. And we've also got some advanced options, which you don't need to mess around with, but just to briefly explain these two sliders higher, quality right here is what you'll get if you turn up the slider, but that also increases the credits quite heavily. So it can stay at 40. You don't have to increase this prompt guidance is essentially um, how closely the results will be aligned to your prompt. So the higher the number, the more the AI will stick exactly to your prompt. If you keep this very low, then the AI will have way more creative freedom and add in more color schemes, more different objects, and you know, just be more creative overall. So let's say um, we want to actually go ahead and create something right here. Let's do cute, happy dog wearing sunglasses. And let's do illustration as well on white background. 
Let's do six images in this case. The style is neon punk right now. That's fine. Let's just hit dream and then do that again with the style set to digital art. That way we get a comparison as well. And whilst this is running, we could also go back through history and look at past prompts. One example I want to show you of something that Curtis did the other day on a live stream is he was trying to create sticker sheets. So multiple stickers on the exact same sheet and product and this is how he started um, he had a text to image prompt which essentially said set of six uh, cocker spaniel dog portraits and as you can see some of these are a bit wonky and out of place there's not really six on all of these images and yeah the the layouts are not always ideal for for sticker sheets at least so what he did is in the next prompt he actually used one of these images i believe it was this one as the reference and he did image to image with the same prompt except he changed the dog breed and look how closely the ai actually stuck to the original layout of that image so that is a great way to use the the image to image function i just wanted to show you that as an example now we've got our results back so this is the neon punk version essentially now if you wanted to use any of these files you could just highlight the ones that you like the most and then store them to your listing like this now i've also got the upscaler selected which as i said you don't have to do it but it is an option and then the second result right here and um, we've definitely got some decent graphics as well so let's just use a few as an example because i want to show you how you can quickly remove the background vectorize these and then turn them into a t-shirt design or sticker design within my designs it's all very very easy and seamless because all of the different tools and features that you need are within the my design suite and you don't have to keep jumping from website to website but before I show you how to vectorize, remove the background, etc., I wanted to give you some more prompt examples uh, that you can copy for your own Dream AI prompts as well. This one right here, I thought got decent results. It says one cute Corgi 2D vector illustration, and the style is pretty neat. Here's another variation of it uh, with the Cocker Spaniel, and a lot of these are pretty usable for things like stickers and t-shirts. Next up, we've got a prompt from my uh, t-shirt design mid-journey prompt guide, which is free, by the way. You can find it in the description. And this one is a bit longer, but the results are actually really decent, especially compared to Midjourney. I think some of these images turned out pretty nice. So you could also try this prompt and swap out the main topic to obviously enter various different niches with this sort of design style. And here at the bottom, we've got some more images that Curtis generated, who is one of the founders of my designs, by the way, in case you weren't aware. And these are quite good for Tumblr wraps um, because they have that pattern and 3D feel. So there we go. We've got some, some more prompt suggestions right here for you to try out if you wanted to do um, tumblr wraps for digital downloads or for physical products both of those are possible to sell through my designs so once you're done storing your images to your listings you have to swap from dream ai to the listings tab right here and that should bring up the folder where all of these graphics have been saved into and what you can do now first of all this file slot right here holds our upscaled images now if you didn't select the upscaler it just you know holds the lower resolution ones which is also fine first of all i would go ahead and select all of these listings at once or images with this button click select all and then go to actions select remove background over here then ideally you want to have a slot selected for the no background version if you don't have if an empty slot for that you can click the plus symbol right here give it a name click the check mark and then you're good to go with that output file slot um, you can generate a preview or just go ahead and remove background like this click continue and it's going to put that job into the job queue processing for a few seconds right here usually is quite quick right now that that's done we can double click on the no background slot to preview all of the results the background remover is pretty good it's not always going to be perfect but i mean even these neon punk ones where there was quite a bit of a complex background um, they have been turned into amazing um, usable files so once this step is done go back to the actions tab and click on vectorize image and then we want to change the input file slot from main file to no background because we want to vectorize the versions without a background. The output file slot right here is called vector for me. Once again, if you don't have an output file slot like that, then you can click plus and create it. Hit vectorize right here and wait for this to be finished. 
So there we go, that's done as well. Now we've got a vector file that has the background removed and you don't necessarily need to upscale and vectorize. That's a bit overkill. One or the other is usually enough. Um, but what you can do now to change the format of these or get the exact dimensions for whichever product you're selling is use the canvas system. So if we open this up while having everything selected, you can use a template over here for various different products. The default is for t-shirts. Um, so let's say we wanted to create t-shirt designs with these, we can change the input file slot to vector right here, then increase the size of this so it covers more of the canvas. Let's place it about here, and then we can click sync for this same layout and positioning to be applied to the other listings or other designs as well. So if we flick through these, as you can see, um, now we've got a lot of designs. This one didn't work quite right because it's a different a different prompt. So you'd have to reposition that and let's carry on. These are meant to be for sticker sheets. So it's not the greatest example, um, but you get the idea. In most cases, if you've got similar designs, um, syncing the layout will save you a ton of time. Now you could export these or save these, I should say, to a new file slot with this t-shirt design layout and these t-shirt design dimensions by right here at the bottom, making sure this has PNG selected and then hitting apply. Now the output file slot is configured over here, so you can change that as well and add a new one if you want. But when you hit apply, those will be saved with that new positioning and formatting in terms of dimensions. And then what you can do is either sell them on here on my designs, or you can download the files once this is finished with the action button, um, clicking on download as zip and then you would have to select the design file right here, or you could just download the vector on its own and use those um, however you would like afterwards. So that's a quick walkthrough of Dream AI and how to actually use or utilize the files afterwards and get them into the right dimensions, etc. If you want to learn how my designs can help you save a lot of time with your print on demand business, even if you're still only using the free plan, make sure to check out this video next, which is my entire My Designs beginner walkthrough that showcases all of its features.